A very warm welcome to you from Equa Marketing. This presentation is brought to you by Equa.com, a leader in digital marketing. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another amazing episode of Growing Dentist podcast show. Today, I'm super excited because I have somebody who kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, the kind of things I've been up to lately and uh, which is, you know, build businesses and do very interesting things and think outside the box. His name is Dr. Taylor Clark. He's the author of a hit book, Beating All Odds, discovering where people can discover exactly how to succeed in life and work. He's a dentist first. He's an entrepreneur. He's an author. He's a coach. He's a speaker. Pretty much he's somebody who's passionate about life and business. And uh, so I'm very excited today to have Dr. Taylor on the show today. Dr. Taylor, welcome. Thanks, Nanan. It's a pleasure being here. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on the podcast. Thank you. So for those of us um, who don't know a lot about you, why don't you maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, your story? How did you get started? And I know you're a big student of success. Kind of how did you even start thinking about success? So once you kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us the story about why you got so intrigued by the idea of learning about success. Oh, absolutely, Nanan. It would be my pleasure. Yeah, my name is Taylor Clark. Uh, I graduated from dental school in 2002. Um, I started my practice from scratch. Um, I, learned, I learned very quickly that just because I put my name on the window and put DDS behind it didn't mean people were going to be the path down to come see me. That, in fact, that didn't happen. People didn't come in to see me because they didn't know who I was. They had no idea what I could do. And I learned that, that I had to learn the principles of success, of success and marketing. And I learned that if it is to be, it is up to me. Nobody is going to go out and, and, and succeed my, find my way to success for me. I had to figure it out for, for myself. And I guess the, the time that I really became passionate about it was, let's see if I can try and tell you my story uh, in, in uh, a minute or less. I developed very early on, even before I graduated from dental school, a severe skin, skin sensitivity to wearing any type of healthcare glove um, and washing hands multiple times per day. And, and uh, it was just within a couple of a years of starting my practice, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get through the full work week anymore because of the blisters and the rashes and the irritations on my hands. Uh, and uh, I'd seen multiple dermatologists. I'd used multiple uh, steroidal ointments that uh, that were were helping a little bit, but but uh, finally I had to see a specialist um, in a different state and do some patch testing to figure out if I was allergic to, to chemicals in dentistry or what. To finally figure out what I could do to you know cure this thing and move on, you know, and practice dentistry full time. Long term, long story short, there was no cure. I wasn't allergic to anything, and I figured out that that no dermatologist or specialist was going to be able to to figure out the answer to this problem. I was going to have to figure it out, and that was to cut back. It was to cut back and reduce my exposure to to dental gloves and to sweating underneath them and the the dental uh, chemicals and the materials that we use. And and uh, I've been practicing. Uh, clinically part-time now for about, uh, tw well, for about the past 12 years, I cut back, hired an associate, continued to grow my practice, really dove into marketing, studying success. I've read hundreds of books, articles, magazines, um, and, and listened to lectures from, from experts all across uh, uh, the, the theme of success and, and uh, motivation. And, um, I'm just a big fan of it, and, and uh, I've learned that there are principles to, to success that have been around, not in, I'm sure you're aware of them, uh, many of them, they've been around for thousands of years. And if we find out the laws that govern success, we can have duplicatable results, just like many of our predecessors in, in this world before us, and like many of the people that, that are succeeding today have done so. And um, <clears throat> that, that, there's a mantra that the more you learn, the more you earn. I firmly believe that through self-education and through, through personal motivation and personal growth and development, we can be, we can do, we can have whatever in life we want to, despite and sometimes because of adversities that we face. You know, I love what you said about, you know, because of adversity, and that's very true for you in my life. I got fired four times in a row, you know, before I ended up... Uh, 
creating a business which today has around 200 people in it. And uh, so, and I think sometimes uh, we don't, you know, to get the message. And sometimes, uh, you know, you have to really go through adversity to get the message and learn and grow. And um, Absolutely. that's interesting. And that happened to you as well, right? You you didn't choose not to want, you know, not to practice, you know, 40 hours a week. You had to. So you just come out of dental school, and before you know it, you can't spend all this time practicing. So you had to find another way to create a living. I, and... Yes, absolutely. And there, there, you know, I had hit rock bottom one day when I was, I was. It was about midnight. I was rocking my fourth child, newborn baby. And uh, in a new house, I'm thinking of, about the mortgage, the the uh, student loans, the practice loans, the yeah, like I said, the house payment, the overhead, the the living expenses, and I'm I'm just thinking, you know what? There there has got to be a way that I can that I can come out of this, not only not only survive this, but but maybe use this this adversity as a stepping stone to higher levels of success that I may have never found. And I was reading, and surely I'm. I'm, I'm sure you've read this book, but I was reading a, a book by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Right. And there is a lesson within that book that, that I have really taken to heart, and I firmly believe that anybody can benefit from it. And it's this, that in every failure, every challenge, every seeming downfall or obstacle, some people call them problems. I call them challenges. Every single one of those that we face in our lives carries with it a seed of equivalent or greater success. And depending on the attitude we choose to embrace, we will either see that success or we won't. Right. I totally, totally agree with you on this. And and um, I have two daughters. One is a 14-year-old and the other one is 11 now. And I tell them the number one word in the dictionary you should, I should love is the word failure. Because I have never learned anything useful in my entire life from success. I learned everything I know today and I became everything I am today because of Something didn't go right. Something didn't work out. Something I wanted didn't happen. Getting fired four times in a row. You know, one business almost going under and from the ashes of it, another business coming alive. But everything came down to how I looked at it. You know, I didn't get depressed and say, oh, people think they fired me four times and I'm a loser and all of that stuff. And bring it on, you know, maybe there's something in it and look for that silver lining. And, you know, in other words, look at the glass as half full not half empty because you know when you look at it as half empty you're blaming somebody you know the government you know the weather you know the whatever yeah. whatever right absolutely and, uh, absolutely yeah you know, go ahead doctor what you say about uh, blaming when 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 failure you, you start to you you can either you can either look for the you can either look for the the stepping stone and the silver lining or you can you can have the poor little old me disease the plum disease and and start to blame, and you know, blame leads to blame, or blaming leads to complaining, and complaining leads to, to, uh, you know, there's there's three things that I found that will split your financial throat, throat, split our financial throat faster than anything else will, and it's complaining, blaming, and justifying. If we do those three things, we're just as good as splitting our financial throat. Wouldn't you agree with that? Absolutely. Complaining. I love those three things. Complaining, blaming, and justifying. So complaining meaning, uh, poor me, you know, look at this, you know, it's the government did this to me, it's, you know, the economy did this to me, it's the guy across the street did this to me. Is that what you mean by complaining? Yes, you're giving up your power. Right, right. Uh, I mean, what's the difference between complaining and blaming? Are they similar or, in your mind, different? You know, complaining, I think, complaining is 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 looking at all of the the negativity around you and focusing on that. Blaming is giving up your responsibility. Once you start to blame, you're saying that you're not responsible. And at the end of the day, all of us are responsible for the level of success. Everybody that's on this call, what your your level of success today, there's only one person that's responsible for that and it's you. Right. Right. So complaining, blaming, and what's the third one? Justifying. Justifying. Right. Right. So justifying as in, uh, well, the economy is bad and everybody's business is suffering, so is mine, so you just justify it. Yes, yes. By finding excuses to excuse away our lack of success or our lack of achievement by, you know, exactly. 
oh, the economy, the, the, the economy tanked, or, or nobody's out buying, nobody's looking for a new dentist, and, and uh, everybody else is doing bad, or this happened, or that happened, or, or this, or that, or another. If it is to be, it's up to me. And it doesn't depend what's going on out there. In fact, there's two economies. There's the economy that's out there with all of the things that we have zero control over, what's going on in, in Korea or Iraq or, or Iran or, you know, the president, the elections, all of those sorts of things. That's an economy that we have no control over. But there's another economy, and that's the one behind it, the, the space between our two ears, that we have everything, we can control everything about that. And that's what action am I going to take? What am I going to allow into my head? Am I going to turn the news off, the, the, the gloom and doom, the TV, the negativity? Am I going to shut that off? All of those things, there's things that we can control. And if we focus on those things that we can control and we proactively work on those things that we have control over, there's nothing out there that can stop us in the outer economy. Right. So just to kind of, um, kind of paraphrase what you're saying, the first lesson is, you know, you have to stop blaming and, and pointing the finger and, you know, justifying uh, your situation or your status in life or whatever you want to call it, right? Because yeah. as long as you have that mindset of, you know, blaming and justifying and, you know, and so forth, you will never see the, you know, you will never see the silver lining in that challenge you, because it's not a, you know, challenge for you. It's an obstacle, right? So you have to stop looking for the, the negativity in that and you still should start looking for the positivity. You should try to look for, okay, what can I make out of this? How do I make lemonade out of lemon, right? So that's the first lesson you're sharing, correct? Absolutely, and I'd like to I'd like to take it a step further in it in. Uh, you know, you get a lot of lemons in your life, and it's like, okay, well, how can I make lemonade out of this? Well, why not make lemonade and then make a lemonade stand and franchise that successful lemonade stand? Right. Right. In other words, there's no limit to how far you can keep dreaming and evolving and changing the way you think. And right, how far right. You can I was take with, things. Absolutely. I was with Zig Ziglar years ago. He was one of my first mentors. I was in Texas with him and and he taught me he taught me some wonderful lessons about success in life and he used to always say to to his audiences what uh that 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 you know you can either choose to put on the 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 woes colored glasses and you can see anything through woes colored glasses or you can put on the rose colored glasses. And what we get, we what we get, what we focus on is what we get. We focus on problems and obstacles. What are we going to get more of? Right, problems and obstacles. Absolutely, we focus on opportunities. Opportunities is what we're going to get. And the more we focus on those opportunities, and the more we take advantage of those opportunities, the more opportunities that just seem to magically appear, and and find their way on our path. Exactly, exactly. And the second lesson you are sharing, can you? Um, in terms of, okay, first is the way you look at things, you know, that's number one. Um, the second lesson in your mind that is critical for success? You know what, I think even probably right up there with the, the first lesson is, is not in. There, you know, I think back, let me, let me tell you about when I was a kid. In the Olympics, there was a local archer named Denise Parker. Denise Parker was on TV all the time. That, that young lady, she could hit the bullseye over and over and over again. In fact, she could get the arrow and shoot it right in the bullseye, and then she could shoot it again and split that same arrow that just hit the bullseye. She was so good. And um, she went on and competed in the Olympics. I believe she won the gold medal um, that year that I was, when, when I was a kid, and it was very impressionable upon me. But everybody that is on this call, Nadine, I could take anybody on this call, and if you give me 10 minutes, I, I, with no experience in archery, could teach anybody on this call the principles of archery the best that I know how, put you up against Denise Parker in her prime, and have a competition with her, and the one that I teach on this call will beat Denise every single time. Do you want to know how I do it? Yeah, absolutely, I do. Well, first of all, I would take Denise. I would blindfold her, I would spin around 30 times real fast, and I would give her her bow and her arrow, and I'd say, okay, shoot the target. And then I would take your listener on this podcast, I would have them aim at the target, focus on it, see exactly where it is, 
pull that arrow back and shoot that arrow towards that target as close as they could, every single time they're going to do better than Denise is. Right. And the, the reason why, why is why is that not in? It's because, you know, starting with a clear vision on the end in mind, exactly what do you want? Uh, because exactly. without that clarity, you are just, you know, you might as well not do anything. You might as well not even wake up, you know, from your bed because you know, if you don't know where you're going, to, where you're going, you know, you won't get there, right? So step one is to know where you're going, exactly where you're going. Am I, am I correct? Absolutely, absolutely. To know where you're going, where do you want to go? That has got to be defined in the in the minds of anybody that's trying to to achieve success. How in the world can you be expected to hit a target that you can't even see? Right. And even right. beyond that, how can you hit a target that isn't even there? It's impossible. So first and foremost, you've got to know where you're going. Right. And this brings up a great point. It goes back into our schooling and, and the way we are brought up. We are told to do what we are told, you know, go to school, get a degree, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At some point, we stop thinking and we stop asking those kind of even simple questions. What do you want? You know, where are you going? Right? Why are you yeah. here, right? And of course, you don't know the answers to the questions. You know, like uh, there's a great, you know, quote, right? If you ask the wrong question, you will always get the wrong answer. You know, like exactly. uh, in marketing, for example, one of the questions that I know a lot of doctors ask is, "How did you find us?" And yeah, you know, 30, 20 years ago, before the internet, before Google, that was a great question because yeah, they just had, didn't have any information. They flipped the yellow pages and they saw you on the yellow pages. But now. They do 10 things before they pick up that phone. They check your reviews. They, you know, watch your videos. So you're asking the wrong question. Of course you're going to get the wrong answer. So I understand what you're trying to say. You're saying it's really important to know where you're going. It's really important to, you know, even, you know, ask the right questions. Yes, absolutely. And and, and knowing where you're going, that that has got to be something that, that is important to to the pursuer of success. And if it is important, you know what? If you have a red hot burning why that just really fires you up and just makes you want to get out of bed in the morning and get working on it, you know what? The how the how will manifest itself as you start taking actions towards that target that you're shooting for. People who are on this call might identify what they want to achieve. They might identify their target and have absolutely no idea how they're going to get there. But you know what? The how isn't yours, and it's not my business much of the time when we start out. Right. When we focus on and when we decide where we want to go and we start moving in that direction, the how will manifest itself as we take consistent, repetitive action towards our goals. Right. And this, uh, this, this question on knowing where you're going, I think there's some nuances to it, right? For example, you need to know what's the more important thing. Like Steve Jobs put it, what's the higher order bit? You know, in every situation, that is the most important thing. So, for example, you know, you have two children. You know, you have this car. You have all these things. You, know, you have to ask your question. You know, question: What's more important to you? Is are your kids more important to you? Of course. Then, if that's your answer, then you're going to focus on that more. You know, is your friends more important to you? So, I think sometimes. I think it's not just as simple as knowing where you're going. It's also knowing what is most important to you, you know, because we, if we have that clarity, now we'll put our time into those things that are most important to us first and then to the next thing that's the next most important and so forth, right? So we'll start prioritizing. So once you have clarity, you know, decisions become easy. You know, when people don't think about these things, they try to do everything and they don't do anything well. Absolutely, and and you just you just summarized an entire chapter of my book in in what you just said there in the last thirty seconds, and 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 what it is 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 not in the bigger the why when you know what you want and then you know what's important to you that it's so it's a red hot burning why the bigger the why the easier the how. Right, right. Yeah, and and all these other things just vanishes. I mean, if if your daughter is important to you, hey, you know, bingo. You don't need to think too too long. You know, do I go out on Friday and, and entertain all my friends, or do I help my daughter with her, whatever she needs help with? You know, um, so yeah, I think unfortunately because we are not so 
good at thinking. We are, we are good at, you know, thinking about science and math and engineering and you name it. But we are not sometimes good at thinking about life and ourselves and, you know, even the basic things. I, I guess we kind of get lost. And I think one of the things I, I bet you learned over the years is, you know, kind of thinking and thinking more about these basic human questions, right? And that's interesting. And um, Yeah, yeah. So we talked about, you know, knowing the why and knowing how important the why is to you. And, of course, that drives everything else. And then, of course, then comes the how. And then one point you made I want to piggyback on is, like, um, I love uh, something that um, what was the gentleman who wrote the book, um, Chicken Soup for the Soul uh, series. Uh, Mark Victor Hansen. Yes, Mark Victor Hansen, but his other co- co-author. Uh, um, the other, the, see, it's Mark Victor Hansen, and um, oh, the other one that's on the, it's coming, it's, it'll come to me. I can tell you what he looks like. I know, I know uh, how he looks like, but uh, yeah, he talked about, uh, you know, a lot of times it's like driving at night. You'll only see 500 feet ahead, and that's all you need to see because once you get to that end of the 500 feet, you will see the next 500 feet. And I think, I think this is again where people overthink, and you know, because they don't see every one of those steps in the thousand mile journey, they, they get overwhelmed or they don't even try, oh, I don't know how to get there, but it's like driving at night. It'll reveal itself, you know, you just go that 500 feet. And is that what you're trying to say about the how? Yeah, that's Jack Canfield that you're talking about. Jack that's a good Canfield. analogy. Exactly, yes, that's him. Yes. Is that is you that your thesis on the how? What's that, did you say? No, I mean, you were talking about first you need to know where you're going, you know. Then you start talk. You started talking about the how to get there. So just asking you, right. uh, what's your thesis on the how? Is this what you what you're trying to say in terms of, you know, don't overthink, just take the first step, and then next step will reveal itself, and, and so forth. Or, I mean, as part yes. of your secret to success. Yes, yes, that uh, you know, you, you're you're you're. Uh your remembrance of Jack Canfield's analogy of that, that car with the headlights in the dark that's, that's shining ahead 500 feet ahead of it, sometimes sometimes we could be taking it, you know, walking in the dark, and we take one step only to find out that the path is lit just one more step ahead of us. So we take right. that next step. And it's it's interesting that that what what we really want in life, you know, in a way really wants us too. And uh, right. when we decide that, that all things out there are for us, and if we live by the, the mantra that, that, hey, this, this world and, and uh, the, the, the world out there is conspiring to help me get what I want, it actually ha- happens to become your reality. Right, right, right. And um, this goes back to something you just mentioned a few minutes ago, which is um, – there is a lot of things that you don't control, and there are a few things you do control. And as you and I think Stephen Covey talked about this. He said, you know, as you work on your circle of influence, it becomes larger and larger and larger. The more you focus on your circle of concern, which you have no influence over, you're wasting your time, and and your circle of influence gets smaller and smaller because you're blaming somebody and you're pointing the fingers and throwing your hands up. And uh, yes, and I'm glad, yes, I'm glad you brought up Stephen Covey. What a what a what a pioneer for for success with his seven habits of highly successful people. Right, right. That's interesting. So we talked uh, a lot of things, you know, the mindset, you know, the positive mindset, looking for those opportunities. You talked about, uh, you know, knowing where you want to go because that's critical, right? Because without knowing where you want to go, you know, you won't get there. And then, you know, and again, how deep is that desire? How strong is your why? And then, on the how, you started talking about, um, you know, that the Jack Canfield example. You know, don't don't worry. You know, you may not have all the answers. All all the path may not be lit for you. At least at, from this vantage point, once you start moving, things will start, you know, revealing them. So you just have to trust and, and take that first step and the next step and the next step. And it's interesting. Um, yeah. Yes, and I'd, I'd like to piggyback on that with, with uh, you know, one of the mantras I have that I learned a long time ago was, is, is not in as, as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, you, you just, you get ready the best, the best way that you can, as fast as you can, and you get started. Right, right. 
Right. So get started. Just do it. You know, like the Nike get, <laughs> slogan, right? Just do it. Yeah, get get started. I mean we can spend we can spend our whole lives away getting ready to get ready and, and, and be you know, be like a car with the wheel spinning and, and nothing but smoke and not going anywhere. Don't be right. that car. Right. Right. Just get get started. You take that first step. And I think this is kind of interesting that we're talking to doctors here, you know, physicians and dentists. And, uh, you know, most of them are very smart. They're usually at the top of their class. And uh, they get 90s and, 90, you know, that's why they ended up in, you know, medical school. And that's why, you know, they stuck with it. And that's why they finished their medical school and became who they became. And uh, and uh, and, the, and I, I talked to, you know, my friends who are also doctors. You know, I've interviewed lots of people and I have lots of clients also who are doctors. And, um, and after a while, I guess, they are. I don't want to use the word institutional, but they're, they're told to think a certain way and act a certain way, and told this is the way the system works, and you're supposed to work within the system, and you know, um, and so forth and so forth. Right? Well, the insurance companies will determine what you make, and you know, you name it. You know, rules, and you know, you, you know, and then they go to these conferences, and you know, they're told to buy this machine and that machine, and you know. And uh, and a lot of these conferences, unfortunately, even though it's supposed to be to help the doctor grow, you know, usually are sponsored by somebody, and they have their own motives and you know, own interests, and of course, they want their products to be promoted and stuff. Uh, so they kind of, I don't know, like, I mean, the question is, how can, how can, because they've done surveys and of dentists, for example, and many of them would say, you know, said that if they had to redo it, they won't do what they, you know, they won't, they would take a different path. So how come these really smart people who are so hardworking and, you know, so committed uh, are not getting everything from life that they want? And and uh, I don't know. I mean, you, you, you have studied success. You know, you, this adversity you turned into an opportunity. And also you went to medical school and you're a dentist. Well, why do you think that happens? And I don't know. What, what, what's your take on it? Well, I, I think for one thing, they they stop learning. And if they stop learning, their mind and their ideas, and their dreams, that, that, that dream ability starts to die. And just like a, a muscle that, that doesn't get that doesn't get uh, exercise atrophies and becomes small and a rubber band is useless until it's stretched. I think that I think the main thing is is when when somebody gets caught in a plateau or uh, you know, you, you mentioned these doctors that, that just figure, you know what, the insurance companies are dictating my success. There's nothing I can do about it. I can go to these seminars. They can have me buy this laser or buy this, this medical device or, or, or what have you and, and still not get anywhere as far as their goals are concerned. Um, you know, there's a couple of things that I can think of. And Jim Rohn, whom I'm sure many on this call have heard, said a, a long time ago before he passed away, he said, uh, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. Right. And I think it's important that we, that we are always learning and always striving to, to get into contact with, with the principles of success. And if it, if it comes down to, to get, hiring a coach or hiring a mentor, Sometimes that's the fastest way to leapfrog your way to success by, you know, isn't it true, not in you and I and all those on this call, we won't live long enough to make all the mistakes and make them on our own and learn all from ourselves. All right. Why not, why not leverage, leverage the mistakes and, and, and the lessons that people before us have, have, have experienced and get a coach, get a mentor. Get somebody who's more successful than you are in an area of life and, and, and have them mentor you. Surely you'll get there faster that way than trying to make all the mistakes on your own. You're not going to live long enough. Exactly. Absolutely. I, I love that point you're talking about coaching. And I actually have my own coach. And I, I, you know, and I use a company called Strategic Coach and, you know, very smart guy who runs it. And I love that. And we'll come back to that. Before I get into it, I love a phrase you said. You said uh, – Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. And that I want to pass that statement. 
And who said this, by the way? Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn, right. You know, formal education is education where somebody decides what you're going to learn, right? Somebody else, not you, right? Yes, like, uh, me- like medical school or dental school or getting your degree to get into medical or dental school. Or oh, you see. Oh, even CE, right? Somebody else is deciding what you're going to study that day. You know, you don't set the agenda. Somebody else is, right? Right. So, right. so even though a lot of doctors are learning and getting a lot of CE along the way, but it's not self-education. A lot of times it's formal education that somebody else sets the agenda for. Um, and a lot yeah. of times as you get into the real world and you become a professional, a lot of this agenda is set by third parties, not by you, Right. Um, yeah. What he's saying is self-education is you choosing what you're going to learn and you being very, very specific, right? You know, who am I? What, 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 do, you, what do I want to do? What, you know, and then figuring out how do I get there and starting to find the answers to those questions. Um, like you said, when you got that, uh, you know, issue, you know, with your skin, you know, you had to figure it out. There was no school that would teach you what to do, you know. I mean, there was nobody else like you. Maybe there was, but not 3,000 of you guys, right? So there's no class you could attend and workshop you could take and you know and you tried it you went to all these experts and dermatologists and you know what it didn't work and and uh you know you had to find your own path you know which started yeah. by changing the way you were thinking you know from hey i need to work like every other dentist 40 hours and so forth i need to work less because i cannot you know because of my skin interesting yeah. i yeah. love that phrase self-education Makes will make you a fortune versus formal education will make you a living. Yeah, absolutely. And it all began when I, when I was forced to think outside the box, if you will. One of my mm-hmm. very first mentors was, was Zig Ziglar. And like I'd mentioned before on this call, um, I, I studied with him intensely. I read his, his book, See You at the Top. I mean, that's one of the greatest books on success ever, and I'd recommend anybody on this call to go grab a copy of See You at the Top and, and, and read it by Zig Ziglar. And um, I, was, I was, you know, with him in, in Texas and, and talking about uh, how, I could, how, I could, how I could just uh, go to the next level and, and, and figure out how to succeed despite and, and probably pr- precisely because of the present adversity that I, I had been facing and one of the things that I learned from him was, and, and this was one of the mantras that he had, and it's this. It's when I'm sitting, I'm reading. When I'm moving, I'm listening. And the more that we can avoid having dead pockets of time in our day, the more, the more we are going to succeed by filling our mind with the information that will help us get to where we want to go. And it's, it's that, that old mantra, the more you learn, the more you earn. And right. um, automobile university, you know, we all have commutes. We all drive a car. Don't waste time li- listening to pointless, mindless talk shows. Right. Put in a put in an audio, audio recording, an educational recording on success, motivation, or or something to do with with uh, you know your profession that that will help you advance your mind and your thinking. Um, we could all get PhDs in ten years if we'll just take advantage of the dead time in our day by by feeding our mind with with uh, educational materials, self-educational materials. Right. And I think a lot of um, a lot of um, people who did amazing things, a lot of them probably didn't even have college degrees. I mean, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg. But they're lifelong learners. I mean, they read. I think Mark Zuckerberg in one of his annual challenges wanted to read a book every two weeks, and he ended up reading 24 books in a you know, year. And I, I bet he reads a ton of books, right? And so all these guys are into self-education, and you know, I typically read around 50 books. I mean, I don't read them, but I listen to them. Uh, yeah, and 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 I think you have to really, really be a voracious learner. I think if you want to succeed, I think that's one of the points you made earlier as well. You know, um, like you know, learning, you know, studying and studying some more and learning some more, but not really just taking a degree program for two years and just telling what you know, just following what the instructor tells you, but rather just self-learning, rather just following your heart, following your passion, following your interests. Yes, there are all kinds of success books and, and materials out there to help us help us get to any level of expertise anywhere we want in our life. And uh, listening to them is, is, is a powerful way as well. Like, like you, I listen to many books and, and um, it's, you, the, 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 the information is there. 
We've just got to take advantage of getting it into our heads and then taking action on that information that we that we learn. Right. The other thing I kind of noticed, and I would like your take on it, but if you look at people who are ex, you know, exponentially more successful, you know, 10 times, 100 times more successful, most of them focus on serving others. You know, for example, Steve Jobs, yeah, he made billions, but he wanted to make technology a servant to humans, right? Bill Gates, he made billions, but he wanted to put a desktop on every computer. Right, they all kind of had a noble purpose that was bigger than themselves, you know, and they really committed themselves to that. And of course, success was there, but it was a byproduct, you know. Uh, success was not something they woke up. It's almost like I, I find, you know, like we are doing this podcast. You know, I don't make a dime doing this, but I feel the more people who listen and grow and benefit from it, eventually it'll come back to help me, you know. So a lot of the things that I, I'm learning, you know, as I grow older and wiser and, you know, stuff like that is that uh, the more you give, the more you get. And um, I love a quote from Dale Carnegie. He said, uh, uh, the world is full of people who are grabbing and self-seeking. In that world, the rare individual who focuses on helping others get what they want has no competition. And he said it 60 years ago or 70 years ago, and it's true today as it was 70 years ago. And uh, it's interesting. I, I, what's your take on that, the idea of serving others, the idea of you know, giving a lot of value to others? Oh, and you're so hitting the nail right on, right on the head. It, it's, it's the, you can have anything you want in this life if you're just willing to go help enough other people get what they want. Zig Ziglar taught me that many years ago, and it's like a boomerang. What you throw out will eventually come spinning right back to you, and many times in multiples. And uh, it's the book, you know, the book, The Go-Giver. They talk about that same sort of a thing. The, the more value, the more value that you can provide to the marketplace and to the world determines the level of your paycheck, the level of your success, the level of your happiness. And, you know, if you're a doctor or if you're a dentist, a business owner listening to this, this phone call, you want to have more success, well, go find a way to provide more value to more people. And right. um, it, it's the, uh, it's, you know, another, another one of the formulas for one of the greatest formulas that, that I know of for, for becoming wealthy was, was best explained by Wallace Waddles in his book, The Science of Getting Rich, many, many, many years ago. And it's this. If you can learn how to deliver more in use and service value than what your customers pay you in dollars, right. wealth will be yours in multiples. Right, right. And one of the things I like to think of is like for every dollar I get, I should give $10 back, you know. Because if if you if you're that compelling and if that's your metric and you try to do better than that, you know, you will have clients for life and you know they will never leave you because you're giving them so much value. And not only will they never leave you, they're going to tell their friends, they're going to tell their relatives, their neighbors, and then, and then the next thing you know, you've got their you know you've got their circle of influence, and then those people come in and you've got a whole other circle of influence and. I love that you talked about this podcast and how you don't get paid anything to do this. I don't get paid. You're not paying. Last time I checked, you're not paying me to be on this either, are you? Yeah, absolutely not. Exactly. It's a principle that you and I both understand that if we can provide value to those listeners that are on this call, hey, it's eventually going to come back to us in one way or another. And those people that are listening to the call, they are going to advance as well. And it's, it's just a win-win situation all the way around. Right. And this is the other thing. I think sometimes people define success narrowly. They think of success as money. Sometimes success can come in terms of relationships, right? Maybe you and I will strike up a relationship and, you know, we'll get to know each other and do all kinds of wonderful things. Or maybe one of the listeners might strike up a relationship and call you and say, hey, you know, and maybe you guys will end up doing wonderful things. You know, it's beyond money sometimes, right? So a lot of times we define success as money, but success can be in relationship. Success can be in happiness. Success can be in, you know, you know, all kinds of things, you know, um, time, you know. So, I mean, sometimes one of the things I get out of this is like when I'm sharing ideas or reflecting on an idea you are sharing, it reinforces those ideas in my mind, you know. So sometimes I'm growing because of it, you know, even though I'm trying to help others, but 
I grow a ton because I learn from, you know, amazing people like yourself. So I think the other thing I noticed that the people who are very successful do is they look at success in very different lens than the average person. Yeah. Yes, I think you're right. And, and uh, I, I'm glad that you brought this up, but it's not always just about the money. And um, having, having, having a network and having relationships and uh, like like me meeting you and you meeting me, I mean, there, there's lots of there's 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 unlimited good and value for both of us that can come from you and me meeting each other. And okay. and another another element of success that I'd like to that I'd like to throw out there is is time freedom. Not in <clears throat> when I was when I was uh, when I was facing that difficulty back to, you know, 11, 12 years ago with how in the world am I going to provide for my family when I can't even get through a work week anymore? I decided a long time ago, you know, even a few years before that, that when I started my dental practice 15 years ago, that I was going to choose my lifestyle first and then build my business around that. How many times do we, do we, do we hear of people out making a living uh, going and making the living and, and using the time that's left over to be with the kids and, and the family and, and do those things, uh, you know what? For, for me, time freedom is phenomenal. Just before we did this call, I spontaneously, I, I, I said to my wife, hey, let's go on a walk. And we went on a one-hour walk on a, on a Monday right in the middle of, of a, what would be a, a considered a work day. And we went on a leisurely walk, and I just completely enjoyed my wife for an hour. And I love that I can do that. All right. You know, this is something I'm personally struggling with. Like, I guess sometimes we love what we do so much. It's just finding the time to do other things It can be a challenge. I, I would love to learn from you. Like, how did you, you know, like, I, I know, like, we talk about, you know, bigger future, which is time, money, purpose, and relationships. So how did you kind of realize that? And how did, realizing is one thing, but how do you actually start implementing it and living it? You know, um, and one feedback I got is just schedule it in, just plan it, just like you plan everything else. Plan your free time. You know, plan your time with your wife, or plan your time with dot dot dot. Right? I'm just yeah. curious. How 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 do you how do you prioritize and how do you make it happen? You know, I. I when I first started my my practice in 2002, I I decided that I was going to make my family my highest priority, and not in my wife and my my six children. They mean the world to me. They are my red hot burning why. They're why I do what I do. They, in addition to the fact that I love helping people, I love I love 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 advocating the underdog. I love helping somebody that that is facing difficulties in and odds, beat their odds, beat the obstacles, and come out, uh, come out successful. But, but, but back to your question, it's, it's establishing what is most important to you, establishing that lifestyle, build your work around that. If, if your wife and your two daughters, I believe you said you had two daughters, correct? Yes. yes. If, if, they are, if they are the most important part of your life, then, then schedule those vacations. Put them on the calendar. Um, you know, when I first started, I, I decided that I, I was going to make, I was going to make, uh, I was going to make my money, and I was going to make a living in, in these. I, for example, I work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday clinically in the dental practice from 7:30 in the morning until one in the afternoon. That's about 18, 19 hours. Beyond that, I'm flexible. I can be an entrepreneur. I can grow my dental practice from afar, from my home office, by doing the marketing, by doing the, the grow, you know, building the business. I can do that at my convenience. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. If right. my kid, if my kid has, has a tournament, an ultimate Frisbee tournament, on Monday and Tuesday afternoon, starting at 3.30 in the afternoon, like today and tomorrow, guess what? You know where I'm going to be, not in? Right. I'm not going to be spinning a drill chair side fixing a tooth. I'm going to be there cheering my daughter on, and she's going to remember that I was at her tournament. She's going to remember right. that dad was cheering her on. And right. sometimes sometimes there, there isn't a, a, a track meet or there isn't a, a basketball game to go to at, at 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I'm just pounding it, working on the businesses. 
and sometimes uh, you know I, I'm working I'm, I'm I'm working on my businesses and on my 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 success around my chosen lifestyle, which is being there with my family. Right. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. So you're saying plan it in, schedule it in, and then um, when you do have the free time, free time again, choose. What's more important? Okay, is it working in the business or working on the business? So of course, working on the business is more important than working in the business. So you it, have that priority. Right? Number one comes your daughter. I mean your kids. Number two comes working on the business. And so you you know like number one, number two, number three. So you can just shift your times in a in a in a moment's notice. You know in different areas. Yes. Yes, and I and and going back to your statement that you just that you just talked about. You know, as business owners, we can be the cook in the kitchen, doing all of the work all of the time, or we can be working on the business. And 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 Michael Gerber in his book The E Myth explains it best, I think, that that time spent working on the business can have a return on investment in multiples far greater than than time spent working in the business. So I would I would I would encourage all all uh, business owners on this on this call to find ways to up the amount of time that is being worked on the business and if it's not by you it's got to be done by somebody right yeah for the last 10 years i probably spent 90 percent of my time working on the business uh, because for me my creation is the product is the business my I, you know my you know mona lisa is my business and uh, and I just keep tweaking it and modifying it and changing it and evolving it and it's fun, you know. And a lot of people kind of realize that even though you don't get paid for it immediately, in the long term, that pays you ten times more than anything else. Working on the business. Yes, it's like the pump analogy, you know, where where you you have that pump and you're pumping, you're pumping, and you're pumping, and you're pumping, and that water is deep, 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 deep within the earth and you don't see that water coming up from hundreds of feet below the earth, but you have faith that it will, and you keep pumping and you keep pumping and you just keep going and going and going. And then the most beautiful thing happens after hours and hours of toil and labor and sometimes years and years of toil and labor, you see that first drop come out of the spigot. And you just keep on pumping and you keep on cranking and cranking and cranking, and then pretty soon that drop turns into a stream. And you keep going and going and going, and then that stream turns into a nice steady flow. And then the next thing you know, that water is just gushing out of that pump. And at that point, uh, not in, like like you after 10 years of spending 90% of your time cranking that pump, I would suspect that right now you're having having that water gushing out. Do you still have to pump? Yes, you do. But you don't have to crank, 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 crank like you did for the first 10 years. Right now, you can just kind of keep on cranking and see that water flow and come crank it again. It, 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 would that explain how, how, uh, how things are working for you right now? Absolutely. And the thing is for me, I, I only do what I love. So I don't do anything else. Like, for example, I don't, you know, like uh, the amount of time I spend checking my emails, zero. My assistant does that for me and shows me what I need to look at once a morning for 10 minutes for me to just handle all my stuff. You know, so I really put all my time into what I love. So that's why sometimes I go crazy because I just love this stuff, you know. Uh, you know, like like I don't do what I don't enjoy, you know. I just don't do it. If I don't like something, I figure out a way to either get rid of it or give it to somebody else. You know. I, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. I only do those aspects of dentistry and those 17 to 18 hours chair side that I'm there. I only do those things that I love to do, that I enjoy, that I'm the best at. All, All of right. the other things, some uh, another doctor can do those for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's kind of funny though. It's like, and you talked about, you know, the value of a coach, and, and I mean, even this this podcast, right? I mean, we didn't figure this out on day one. We made a ton of mistakes. I did, and I'm sure you did. And uh, you know, little by little by little, we start, you know, learning these things just the hard way. And sometimes, you know, life is a great teacher, you know, because when you learn things the hard way, you never forget it. But um, as a as a dentist or as a business owner, you know, sometimes they can find a shortcut. Maybe they can get some help. Maybe they can read a book. Maybe they can get a coach. You know, maybe they can focus on self education. You know, because uh, even though I made a ton of mistakes, I also learned from other people's mistakes. You know, and I'm sure you did the same thing. 
Oh, absolutely. And I, I love to be able to learn from other people's mistakes because that means I don't have to I don't have to go through the pain of making that mistake. I can learn from them. And the, the neat thing about it is, is when you when you seek out coaches and mentors, uh, there's there's all kinds of very successful people out there that love to help other people experience the same levels and similar similar levels of success without having to go through the same pain they went through. Right. And uh, it, it reminds me of, of a number of years ago, I, I when I first started having dentists ask me to coach and mentor them, you know, they they asked me if I if 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 I was for hire essentially, and at the time I said no. But then after a while, I thought, you know, these people that, that are asking me to mentor them, why say no? Why not say yes and, you know, charge them a fair fee and, and help them help them get to where I've been able, where I've been blessed to get, but do it much faster. And one of my, one of my very favorite coaching clients um, over the last, uh, in 2016, came to me and asked me if, uh, if if I would mentor him, and and I told him I would, and told him what my monthly fee was, and and it was an absolute joy because I could see that I could see that young dentist go from in, in ten months I could see him go from one level of income and one level of, of of production to two and a half times what he was doing within just ten months, and I thought, goodness gracious, if if I would have if I would have been smart like him. <laughs> and sought out a, a coach when I was when I was starting out. I could have got there so much faster. And uh, he was happy. I was happy. And and uh, that's why you're doing your business because you're being able to see the same. You know, help people do the same sort of thing. Correct. Right. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it at the beginning, right? To create amazing success, you have to help a ton of people, and you have to give them a lot of value. And uh, and you are rewarded in so many ways, you know, the relationships, the time, the money, the the, the happiness, all of these things. So um, and so every, I mean, even though we think we're giving ten times value, but if you really add up everything in terms of the time, money, relationships, and so forth, happiness, we also get the ten times back, and it's awesome. Yeah. Interesting. So tell me a little bit about how do you help dentists and how can somebody get to know, get a hold of you and just tell me just a little bit. So in case some of the listeners here, you know, want to know more and, you know, and also the book you have, you know, um, where can they get the book? Well, first of all, how can a dentist, uh, how can a dentist get a hold of me? Um, I, uh, right now I, I, I only, I only mentor and personally coach a, a select number of dentists and I, I, I'm going to go ahead and give out my personal cell phone, and uh, the the number in the United States. I understand you're in Canada, but my area code is two zero eight three five three five three zero one. That's my personal cell phone. My email address is Dr. Clark D R C L A R K at beatingalloddz.com. And my book, Beating All Odds, can can be found at beatingalloddz.com. Each book that's purchased through there, I personally sign it before it gets sent out. Um, that's how somebody can get a hold of me. And um, your your other question was how how do I mentor a dentist? How do I how do I coach them? Yeah, like, I mean, let's say um, just even like you want people to just call you and have a chat with you, like in, in the sense like you say, I'm not really sure what you do or how you can help me. Like how, how do you typically kind of start start the conversation? Well, the best way would be to shoot me a text. If you can text me, um, text me uh, that you'd like to speak with me. I like to have a conversation with 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 the dentist before I before I uh, decide to to accept the the uh, the challenge and the responsibility of helping helping that dentist grow. Um, and it it takes me about twenty or thirty minutes to find out. First of all, what I want to find out is, is A, are they, are they coachable? B, do they have a red-hot burning desire to get somewhere else than where they're at? Do they know where they want to go? And if they don't know, that doesn't matter. Do they just want to get better? And if, if they do, if they want something more and if they want to grow their practice or if they want to grow themselves or, or their level of success, I, I just want to, know, I want to know how big is that desire and I want to know if if they're ready to roll up the sleeves and and get to work and to be coachable and teachable, 
and within about 20 or 30 minutes, I can tell I can tell if if uh, if what I have to offer is going to going to help them. And if I if I accept and 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 and, and take them on as a coaching client, oh, it's a lot of fun. I just love a challenge. I love I love starting at a certain level and and shooting high and working on the first double and and uh, the growth that goes from there. So best way is to shoot me a text. If you call me, I probably won't answer. Um, I, I may be with another client, another another uh, another doctor, or in one of my businesses, but I will always return get back with you. Right, and then once you decide to take them on, and you do take them on. Typically, are there calls? How does how does the coaching relationship go? You know, there's a book uh, called called um, uh, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And have you read that book? No, I haven't. Go look it up. The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. He's the founder of Success Magazine. I believe he sold that magazine to somebody else right now. But that book is just phenomenal. And what he talks about is having having a success partner having a success buddy or, a, or an accountability partner. And I've patterned my coaching after, after his recommendation. And what I do is, is Fridays, Fridays are a day that usually dentists uh, are closed or, or, or do have some available time. And Friday's a day that I dedicate to coaching my, my dentist clients. And I like to do them in 30 minute segments. And, and each, each Friday, and sometimes I'm out of the country, and sometimes I'm on a speaking engagement or, or something, and I'm not available. But I like to have at least three 30-minute accountability calls where we get on the phone and we talk, about, we talk about exactly what they did last week. Did they accomplish what they set out to do? And if they didn't, how are they going to accomplish it in the next seven days? And uh, talking, about, <clears throat> talking about where they're at and what it's going to take to get them to grow to that next level. And I firmly believe in Vince Lombardi's uh, principles of success. You know Vince Lombardi, the former Super Bowl champion coach for the Green Bay Packers years ago that the, the NFL uh, Super Bowl trophy is named after. And uh, his, what he would focus on year in, year out with his teams, his Super Bowl champion teams, is, is you know, success isn't, 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 isn't all complicated. Doesn't have to, we don't have to complicate things. We just need to know what the basics are and to become brilliant at the basics. So with dental practice success, I identify seven to ten basics, and we work on those things one, one at a time until they become brilliant at the basics. And uh, when they become brilliant at the basics, the numbers multiply, and it is just fun to see. I get excited seeing it, almost as excited, sometimes more excited than going through it myself. Right. I mean, it's, that's what even Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson said. It all comes down to the fundamentals, right, and uh, the basics. It's not the complicated stuff. Absolutely. And Michael Jordan, we all know he was, he was the, he's the GOAT. He's the greatest of all time. And, and most, there's, there's, you know, LeBron James is getting up there. He's getting close. But Michael, Michael Jordan even said it himself back in his prime. He said, as good as I was and as good as I have been able to become, I was never able to reach the level of success I was capable of without a coach. Right. Bill Jackson saw things that I didn't see, and he led me in directions that, that I couldn't have gone on my own. And uh, isn't it interesting and isn't it neat that once a, a player of the caliber of Michael Jordan, once he found a coach, his, his, his success multiplied and his results synergistically increased in ways that never would have had he not had that coach. Right. Right. The other, the last thought I would like to leave our listeners with is, you know, a lot of the great uh, people who have done an unbelievable thing, they, many of them are very humble. You know, they're very uh, kind and good-hearted, and they, you know, they have a sense of humility. I'm not sure if Michael Jordan has it or not. I don't know too much about him personally, but uh, you know, and that's one of the things I got out of this call. I mean, you're so, uh, you know, humble, and I'm sure you've done a lot of interesting things and helped a lot of people, but. You know, you don't take yourself too seriously, which is awesome. Well, you know, life 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 is a wonderful adventure, and if if we can live live this thing called life, uh, making making life better for other people, that's that's the mission behind all of my businesses. Make life better for people, and I'd like to I'd like to 
kind of conclude my concluding thought, I would I'd like to share a poem if you if you'd allow me to. Absolutely. You know, every single one of us on this call goes through hard things. Every one of us is fighting a hard battle. And some some days are very, very difficult and some days are just just uh they're they're wonderful because it seems like we can't do wrong. But we all face adversity and we all need to overcome failure and learn from failure. And the poem I want to share is called Don't Quit, Author Unknown. And here it is. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're treading seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but do not quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You might succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when you're hardest hit. It's when things seem worse that you mustn't quit. Success is failure turned inside out. I love that. And I love the poem. I do too. It. Uh, I put that up on my wall when I was when I had hit rock bottom those those many years ago, and I've read that thing. It's etched in my heart. And uh, I, I hope if I hope if 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 your listeners don't get anything else out of this phone call, that they get that they get that. Just don't quit. Just keep at it. Just persist until you succeed, because you eventually will if you just don't give up. Right. Right. I really, really appreciate you taking the time today, Doctor. And um, you're all listening to Dr. Taylor Clark. And um, you can reach him on his uh, mobile. And, of course, all of this information will be on the website as well, which is 208-353-5301. And he prefers uh, people texting him as opposed to calling him. And you can also reach him by email at drclark at beatingalloddscom Thank you, Dr. Clark. And uh, I really enjoyed my time today. Thanks so much, Nina, and it's a pleasure. I look forward to, uh, to networking with you in the future. Thank you, Doctor. Appreciate it.